why would you want an Airstream? We're going to talk about the pros and cons of these iconic travel trailers next. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz and I have an exciting video for you today because we're going to talk about Airstreams and are they worth it? Do you know that brand new Airstreams travel trailers go for over $200,000? I really love Airstreams. I think they're eye candy. I love looking at them. I love meeting neighbors with Airstreams and taking a tour of them. But I have to say as a full-time RVer myself, I just don't think that I could full-time in one. So I will go over the cons, but first let's talk about the good things about Airstream. Now to help me, since I don't own an Airstream, I have interviewed full-time RVers Karen and Carl. They have been full-timing in their Airstream since May 2020. They will answer all your questions and that interview will be later in this video. Now Airstream, if you don't know, has been around since the 1930s. They are made right here in the U.S., have always been made in the U.S., and were founded by Wally buy him. And he contributed to the Mystique way back in the 1950s by doing some Airstream caravans around the world. Now Airstream also makes Class B camper vans. This video is only going to be about the travel trailers. In general, the travel trailers range from 16 feet to 33 feet long. And they're not very tall, 9 feet 6 inches including the roof air and the interior height ceiling height is only about six feet six inches. Number one, it is a good design. These are beautiful inside and out. They seem absolutely timeless. There's lots of windows. They often do themed designs like Pottery Barn or Tommy Bahama, all kinds of different ones that just really make them beautiful to look at. The thing about an Airstream, since the longest one is 33 feet, they can pretty much go anywhere. They can go in most of the national parks and they're also great for boondocking. They're very nimble. Karen and Carl, who you'll be hearing from soon, are in Alaska right now. They boondocked most of the way up in their Airstream and the Airstream seems perfect for this big adventure. I love the low clearance, by the way, because you don't have to worry about low bridges or any height restrictions, low branches, that kind of thing, and they are half ton towable. That means you don't have to buy a great big truck. The smaller ones can be towed by an SUV. I think the cons to an Airstream are pretty serious. The first one is lack of storage. Because they're built so low, there's very little outside storage. It's generally pretty small compartments. And inside, again, because they're so low, your lower storage, you actually have to go around the wheel well. So the wheel well cuts into what storage you could have at the lower parts. And there's not a lot of overhead storage either. And what you do have, you're limited because of the rounded sides of the Airstream. Your cargo carrying capacity is quite low if you're going to full time. The highest cargo carrying capacity you can find is about 2,000 pounds. The little 16 foot Bambi, you only have 500 pounds cargo carrying capacity. So that's not a lot. And your cargo carrying capacity includes your water tank and your propane tank. Even batteries, which of course can weigh quite a lot if you're going solar, plus the weight of the solar panel. So what happens is most people end up using their truck bed as storage. I think that's a fine solution and that may be the answer for you. The next con, and it's a biggie, is that Airstreams are expensive. I mentioned that brand new ones can go for over $200,000. Even the used market, they're going pretty expensive, $75,000, $85,000, and you have to go pretty old to get down to $30,000 or $40,000. So if you take that money and you look at other travel trailers in that price range, you're probably going to find newer, more bells and whistles, a lot more storage, and slide so you'll have a lot more space. Now I know it can be done, I just don't know how. How do families full time in an Airstream, even a couple, without having the slides? It just feels like it would be claustrophobic. You know, you just are living in this tube. And I think that would be really challenging with a family and kids, or even as a couple, it seems like if one person stood up, the other person would have to sit down because it would be hard to have two people in the aisle at the same time. 
I've had two separate neighbors tell me that the Airstream air conditioners on the newer Airstreams are not robust enough. In fact, I had neighbors who gave me a tour of their Airstream a couple summers ago. It was 85 degrees outside and it was about 82 inside. I will let Karen and Carl answer the air conditioning question and really answer all your questions about Airstream. They've been full-timing for over three years and they'll also share the mods they made to make their Airstream work for them. I want to give a shout out to RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding for sponsoring this video. If you're buying a used camper, no matter what it is, a travel trailer, fifth wheel, Airstream, motorhome, whatever, you will definitely want to replace that mattress. Also, if you're buying new, a lot of those mattresses are like cardboard. So another reason why you will need to replace that mattress. I actually cratered the mattress in my brand new 2020 Grand Design fifth wheel a couple years ago, and it took me only three weeks to crater it. I have now been sleeping on a Brooklyn bedding mattress for a year. I absolutely love it. I wake up pain free. Now what I have is the Aurora Lux. It's a tall mattress and it's kind of heavy. I would recommend for an Airstream to not go for that, but to go for something lighter like the Dream Foam series. And did you know that you can get a Brooklyn bedding mattress in your home? They are not limited to just RVs. This is wonderful if it's time to upgrade your mattress or if you're waking up with aches and pains, definitely check them out. Brooklyn bedding gives you a 120 night sleep trial. There's a 10 year warranty and there's free shipping. The Brooklyn Bedding Factory is in Arizona, so they come pretty quick. They come in a box. They can be a little heavy, so you might wanna get some help. When you unroll it, they puff up, which is fun to look at. I really love my mattress, and if you are interested in getting a mattress for your camper or your home, don't pay full price. I can get you 25% off. Just go to rvmattress.com slash Liz Amazing and then put in the coupon code Liz Amazing and you'll save 25%. The Airstream is our first and only camper so far. I love the windows and the skylights and the amount of natural light that we get in. When we would go to RV shows and walk in other RVs, and then walk into the Airstream, you could actually feel the difference in quality. You know, the quality build of them and, and the iconicness of it because the Airstream have been around for quite a number of years. And it's, I mean, we still get people go, oh, nice Airstream or wow, cool Airstream in a lot of parks. We're the only ones in there. The other thing too, is there's a little bit of a romance to it. Wally Byam who started Airstream back in the 30s, 20s or 30s yeah. or whatever. The RV caravan that he started, he's a legend. And it was all these Airstreams going to Egypt and going down to South America. And you get nostalgic and romantic about it when you learn about it and want to kind of become a part of that. And Airstream Club still does caravans. That's a 2005. 30-foot classic. It's a two-axle trailer. We were trying to find a 27, but they're they're just hard to find because they didn't make a ton of them. And we looked at the smaller 25-footers, but the way it was laid out in the bedroom, you were sleeping beside the bathroom. That would be problematic. Our unit actually has the shower and the we have a composting toilet, so the shower, the sink, and all that is in one area, and then. The other area is a big closet where some of them have the shower on one side and the bathroom on the other side, which makes it a little bit extra skelter for me. But and we do have a queen, queen size, size bed, bed that you can walk around with a door, which is really nice. We took the dinette out, which gave us more space to do what we wanted yeah. to in, in here. We don't have any slide outs, but we find that we have enough space for the two of us. Slide outs would be nice, but they're heavy and the slides are problematic as most people that have slides will tell you. If they haven't had a problem, it's only because it hasn't happened yet, but it will happen at some point. <laughs> the 30 foot length gives us a plenty of space inside. I mean, we have the kitchen area, we have the front couch dining area, then you have the separate bedroom bathroom area in the back. So it's it's almost like you have three distinct areas. I would say a downside, we, we rarely have people come inside, like if it's raining outside, 
four of us could not we could but it would not be comfortable to sit in here and talk whereas when we've hung out with people who have larger rvs uh, with slide outs and everything if it's not the greatest of days or if it's getting into the evening and you just want to hang out at inside because of bugs or whatever they have a nicer big space for the four of us to sit comfortably and enjoy a nice conversation i mean we don't have space for a a washer dryer like some of the larger air RVs have. We do have a small compact washing machine, you know, in that we shower. store in the shower. <laughs> we only use it occasionally. We don't use it regularly, like for regular laundry. We do use the back of our pickup truck for as our garage <laughs> for a lot of storage. Mm -hmm. Although what we need on a daily basis, we have plenty of space in the Airstream for our daily basis stuff for you know extra tools and things that you don't use very often we really don't have cargo space for that that goes in the back of the truck well i have to say i wish i could be an airstream person i'm always fascinated by them they're so beautiful but the stopper for me was the cargo carrying capacity have you weighed yours do you know that you're underweight or at weight or like a lot of people don't want to go there. I've weighed it several times on the cat scales. Now hooked up to the truck with the weight bars on it, I'm, I'm scaling about 8,300 and my, and my max is about 8,600. Last year, we actually changed out the axles because they were 20 years old. So when we did that, we actually upped the capacity from a 4,300 to a 4,500 axle. So we actually increased our capacity to, to more keep it in line with where we're at, we're, we're heavy. I mean, I mean, when we're full of water and, you know, all this stuff, everybody's heavy. Typically, though, we're not riding around with full tanks of water. Up here in Alaska, we are because... We're doing a lot of boondocking A lot of boondocking. A lot of boondocking. Do you think the Airstream is well suited for boondocking? Especially us because we're outfitted with 600 watts of solar on the roof. And then I have 335 watts of solar on the top of the truck. And we have two 230 amp hour lithium batteries. So and we replaced the, the regular toilet with a composting toilet because we knew we wanted to do boondocking. Literally, we have not been plugged in for over a month yeah. <laughs> up here wow. in Alaska. Wow. Almost two months, actually. I'm going on two months. We have a 2005, 2005, so we're older. We're older. On the walls, they actually, it's not metal. There's metal on the walls, but you don't see the metal. It's actually, it has a coat, uh, it has, it almost looks like a carpet type material on it. Also overhead, the headliner has a quarter inch or better of foam, almost like a car headliner. So you've got that foam and then the vinyl inside there. And so we don't get so much heat transference like the new ones. And I've been in the new ones in cold and hot. You can put your hand on the wall and you can feel the heat. You put your hand on the wall of ours, even on a side that has sun coming in, and it feels warm, but it doesn't feel excessively warm. We have a 15,000 BTU heat pump and we were in the Airstream International Rally in Doswell, Virginia in 2019. It was 103 or so degrees out there, and we were in a field with no shade. And I mean, it was 80 degrees, but it wasn't bad because the air conditioning system was able to keep up and maintain, and it was comfortable. Now we have, you know, we have a 30 foot, and it's it's an older Airstream. We only I have, have one. one air conditioning unit for the entire Airstream. We have not had. When we've used it, we have been fine with it. The newer Airstreams have two AC units on them. One usually over the bedroom and then one up in the living area. And the, and the reason why is because you've got metal and you've got a, three inches of insulation and they use fiberglass insulation, which is not the best, and then metal. So you get a lot of heat transference across there. It's just thermodynamics. <laughs> if somebody wanted to get an Airstream and they wanted to get one that's better built, they should buy before what year do you think? 
right before 2020, they were moving the factory, but they were kind of going through the changeover and then COVID hit. So that really screwed mm -hmm. things up. A lot of talk on the forums about cabinets falling, doors falling, just all kind of problems with these newer and units. And the other That's thing, and this crazy. is probably true with any new unit. any RV, is we totally recommend that someone buy a used Airstream. First of all, the cost factor is going, Airstreams cost a lot already, brand new. They're very so expensive. they're a little bit more affordable when you buy them used. But when somebody buys something new, they go through all the warranty stuff and get all the stuff that needs to be fixed, fixed. So if you buy something that someone else has owned for two, three, four years, they've already fixed all the issues and then you get the Airstream and it's already fixed. And at a lower cost. <laughs> and at a lower cost. So, I mean, we've had to fix some things since we bought ours, but ours is almost 20 years old. We've had to replace the refrigerator. And, and we actually went from the LP, the, the, dual, the dual fuel type, to the, the basically the DC type. The 12 which, volt. Which most all the newer units are doing that anyway. Mm -hmm. We have the little auxiliary cooler. It's mm -hmm. DC powered. It's about probably a 48 quart or so. When we were thinking about, okay, when you're full timing and what's important to you, first of all, they never build these RVs with places to have trash. We like to have a regular size trash can. And we recycle. also recycle, so we wanted to have one for recycling. And so when we took out the dinette, we created space a to have a trash can, a recycle bin, and the 12 volt cooler, and it didn't take away from our living space at all because we weren't going to use the dinette. Do they depreciate differently than uh, other trailers? Yes. When we bought ours in 2015, we could sell it now for more than we paid for it. Airstreams kind of depreciate slower anyway because of the crazy events of 2020, the shortages and all that stuff, our unit basically went up from 30000 to $60,000. So we could actually double wow. our money on it if we sold it. But <laughs> I'm not selling. We were in actually in California <laughs> sitting in a Walmart parking lot and we had two cars come up within 20 within minutes, 20 of minutes each and asked us if we wanted to sell it. And this was back in 2020. If we were to switch out this unit, what would we get? And I'll tell you what, it's, you know, when you're an Airstream owner, <laughs> going to something else is, well, uh, the, just as a, Airstream owners, for, to, to us, all the other brands are called SOBs, some other brand. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And let me know if the Airstream is for you or not for you. I would love to hear it. As always, these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing.